Swetnisha. Thank you so much for taking our time for this interview. For the viewers, may we request you to please share your journey, your story in your own words. Yeah, thanks, Ekshita, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, so my name is Swetnisha Srivastava. So I'm currently working as a senior consultant for Gap Inc. I've been with the tech industry for a long time now. It's about 13 years. So I would say that I'm a seasoned professional in the tech industry so far. And um, yeah, so I, I always wanted to do MBA. It was there in my career aspirations for a long time. But, you know, I kept postponing the decision because of some of the other reasons, life had another plans. And um, yeah, but when my daughter was like two years old, that was then I decided that it's a high time I complete this degree. Otherwise, I never know when I'll get the chance next. So that time um, I, I decided to pursue for this MBA. Um, my motivation to do this MBA was not to just get to an academic quest. Um, MBA has a lot more to offer apart from that. MBA is a way to get, get skills which otherwise you would not be exposed in your work, work life, right? I mean, you, you are working in a domain which is very silo from the business side of the world, so you would not get the skills. And it's the next logical step if you want to upgrade your skill set or move into a leadership role. Right. So that was some of my motivation factors to complete my MBA. And I'm glad that, you know, I started thinking in those lines and started my career um, aspirations towards MBA. Mm -hmm. So the next logical step was to um, give GMAT and then research on the schools, right, to where, where I'm targeting to. Yes. So when I started looking into those factors, like for the appearing for the GMAT exams, and then um, like which B schools I can apply to. So those were the time I was just reflecting on all the things which is available. And then being a professional who is having like more than 10 years of experience. Um, and so everybody started advising me that you should look into executive MBA courses because these are the this is one area which seasoned professionals look into more. Because if you are looking into a more full time, you would be again downgraded to the entry level positions, which, right. you know, I didn't want to go. I, I had more than... 10, 12 ex experience. So I wanted something in which I can excel in my particular domain area. Right. So now the next thing was that like there are schools available. And so a lot of lot of students and everybody who, who do MBA a lot early in their career, they're looking for mm -hmm. more full-time MBA courses, right? So my, my thing was totally different. So I had to do an executive MBA because I wanted to excel in my domain area and the tech space itself. So in that way, I started uh, preparing for uh, my DMAT exam and at the same time started researching for my schools. Um, and uh, honestly, I did not have a lot much idea because I was not getting enough context like where do I go, which schools offer this executive MBA courses, a lot of resources online. So in that way, like I partnered with Experts Global and they helped me to select all the schools with where I can apply to. Um, and uh, when I was applying to uh, many of the um, schools, and that time, unfortunately, COVID hit. So, oh. you know, when I was appearing for my interviews and the entire world was in the lockdown state, we and nobody knew what the future is there for. Mm -hmm. So I was up, I applied to many schools, like seven schools, and I got admit uh, confirmation from all the seven schools. But due to this COVID situation, mm -hmm. I, I was tending to go to one school in... Um, Los Angeles area, which I, I couldn't get into because I never knew what's the what's the situation of COVID, right? I'm in, I'm in US, I'm in Bay Area. Mm -hmm. So then ultimately, I decided that I have to pursue my MBA from Levy School of Business, Santa Clara. Glad I took that decision because that's, that school is also rated as um, like it, it was an 11th rank. Um, right. And it has a very, very nice executive MBA course. So I think everything happens for your own good and right. everything turned out fine. Um, and my journey, the MBA journey was really great. A lot of hiccups because mm -hmm. we were online, then we went in person, then back online and, you know, kind of struggling to accommodate everything with respect to the regional COVID spread. But right. that gives you a lot of determination, grit, your flexibility, you know, to complete the course, even with so many challenges mm -hmm. and amazing cohort. I met amazing people in, you know, in my lifetime. It, it's like your friends forever with your 
uh, colleagues and faculty. So, right. um, yeah. So, yeah, here I am. I just completed my MBA. It's been an amazing 20 months experience. I just completed last month. So I'm in kind of a relaxation period. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm not taking it too lightly because, you know, now I'm a disciplined person in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, like managing my time or, you know, trying to get time for my academic uh, ventures a little more. So, okay. yeah, just just continuing my journey from there. Yeah. Wow, this has been a truly inspiring journey. And thank you so much for sharing that experience with us. So in your opinion, what are a few factors or actions you took that made the difference? Yeah, so I would say for me, and it goes for each, every MBA aspirant, mm -hmm. you have to first decide why you want to do an MBA. That's very important. So right. the reason could be different for me. The reason could be different for you. Few people choose an MBA to just, you know, change their domain line or move move into more challenging roles. Mm -hmm. For some people, it's just an, as I mentioned, that they want to add uh, a master's degree and go into the academic pursuit. Maybe they follow with a PhD. Mm -hmm. For few people, it's just like understanding everything, like uh, from a 360 degree view. And it's just different for different uh, people. So you have to understand what's your a motivation for doing an MBA. Just don't think that you like, okay, my friend is doing an MBA and I have to get an MBA. So you have to reflect that first. So I started with this reflection that why I want to do an MBA. Mm -hmm. I got my answers. Everything was clear in my head. Once you get that clear cut direction, mm -hmm. nothing is going to stop you. So, you know, there is no self doubt. And when you don't have any doubt, whatever you are pursuing, um, everything will start automatically falling in uh, place. So, yeah, so getting that clarification in my mind made a really lot of difference. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I proceeded uh, pr preparation and the execution phase. So, you know, my analysis was perfect. Now I have to start my execution phase, prepare for the GMAT, get the right resources or how that will be, how, what kind of a scores I'm looking at because I'm an executive MBA. I have to, I don't have to aspire for like a 750 score GMAT score. I can do well within, uh, you know, a range of 700 to 750. So that became my target score. How much time I would actually take um, to prepare for that. It's, it, it should be quick. I should not be able to give like six to eight months of preparation time. If I just do it in two to three months time, I, I should be able to get into that level to get into a decent college. Right. So, you know, and from there you have to plan out. So uh, in a way you have to get what are your requirements in clear in your head. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, and ask for the help. Like there's so many forums. So don't hesitate that you have to do things just on your own you have to ask for a lot of help and people are there to help you Absolutely. so i think yeah that made a lot of difference in my case yeah right all right so what was the main area on gmat that you struggled a lot in and you know how did you overcome that challenge sentence correction obviously <laughs> so i think that um, normally if you ask nine out of ten gmat uh, those who have taken the word say sentence correction and I was struggling in the same areas. And I think that sentence correction is the common pain point of all the uh, uh, the folks who have given the GMAT. So what helped me at the last moment, like this is just one month before I appeared for my actual GMAT. So I was seeing that my sentence correction scores were just not, you know, getting. So I, I thought that somehow the, my basics are not good in sentence correction. So I went through all the Manhattan resources, which I was following just one time more. I did not add more resources into it because I thought I would just get confused. And then I did a lot of practice sets, especially for the sentence correction part. So that helped me. Um, so, and uh, finally, I think, I, I did good in the actual GMAT on sentence correction part. It was not as bad I, as I expected or I was doing in my mock test. But I would say don't get confused taking into a lot of resources on your hand. Whatever you have, just just do like one or two prep courses and take keep taking some of um, you know the mock exams and keep focusing and keep revising it. If you just take a lot of resources, you know, you just end getting up confused and also work on the timing part. So the timing part is very critical. Uh, so you need to ensure that you, you know, you're, you are able to 
get into the results in a in a faster time and that happens only with practice absolutely yeah that is true so with the benefit of hindsight what are a few mistakes you believe you might have committed in the process yeah definitely so when i started my mba journey i my research was incomplete and there were a couple of colleges to which i could have applied to but i missed the deadlines so you know and i didn't want to wait an additional year to you know to complete that application process and other things so um what mistake i did is like when i started preparing for my gmat i the research part was lagging like you know i was preparing for my M, uh, gmat and then after only after like one month or one and a half months i started looking into the um schools mm-hmm. so i should have done my research a little bit earlier and i didn't know how much effort goes into the application process which itself takes a lot of time so uh, you know, that clarity i did not have earlier so i i made that mistake so anybody who is aspiring to do an mba or come in, so you have to divide the chunk of time like this time is for your gmat preparation at the parallel you have to start researching for your schools and then once you are done with the gmat immediately start for your application process that really takes a lot of time and in that process itself you would have to go a lot of self reflection about your strengths your weaknesses your past leadership examples and everything so these things you have to put into essays and you have to prep for your interviews etc uh, apart from that the b schools look for your extra co curricular activities mm-hmm. so it's it's not an excuse that you are preparing for your gmat or you are applying that you can miss out on those fronts your extra co curricular activity should go because that's what they're looking for that a student can be is able to manage all fronts of life like academically the extra co curricular giving back to the society is what it means so so yeah all right so how was your experience of applying to b schools and what are a few things you believe you did right in successfully achieving the admit so one thing which i did right as i mentioned that you should never hesitate to take help that's what i researched the gmat forum and got the contact for experts global because i was in us and experts global is a firm like operating in india i did not know from here that you know experts global i contacted some of the uh, the local folks who helped with the application process but the fees was really very high which i i was not able to afford then somebody uh, in the gmat forum i came to know about experts global i contacted and you know i got the response very fast so i think partnering with experts global gave me an edge over all the application process so it all started with a discussion mm-hmm. um, i was given a questionnaire when in which uh, it was a reflection about my past experiences past journey mm-hmm. and that reflection told more about myself i had never would have reflected about myself my strengths my weaknesses what areas i already excel at what are my uh, plus points and what are my negative points so and it the the process itself was very transparent it was not something that um you know i'm cooking some stories to you know to make my application the uh, most reasonable or most outstanding it was based on my experience so i would say that the process was very transparent very seamless very uh, fast uh the way my resume was put up the way my essays were uh, the help i got for all the essays and other things mm-hmm. so it was it was um, very good i really liked the process and experts global help um yeah so this was one thing other thing is that i also ventured at many of the local colleges and took um, a set for the demo classes so that gave me a first hand experience uh, that you know how the mba would look like how the class would look like because you are going to enter an academic field after such and such work experience you're not in the college anymore so mm-hmm. like you have a certain gap after you have done that uh, your college and again going into an academic experience so getting into that mindset is also very important right so mm-hmm. i attended the demo classes locally and i i i got the side look how this will look and how i have to um you know ma- prepare myself to attend these classes so that also helped me oh that's really nice i think getting a first hand experience of the entire b school experience is something yeah uh, yeah, yeah. it really helps okay so uh, with what area on 
the application process did you struggle the most and how did you overcome that challenge? Yeah, so one area which I was really struggling most was um, uh, like my resume part mm -hmm. and uh, for the mock interviews part. Like, you know, anytime you have to appear for the mock interviews mm -hmm. and every B school is different, right? And it's not a job interview. In job interview, you are expected to be very prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, the questions are given and you are expected to respond exactly what the interview is looking for. Here, what the B schools are looking for, there should be an honesty in your answer. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, you, you are not supposed to sell yourself in a way that you have to show your passion and motivation, but at the same time, you should show that uh, determination to learn something and create a difference. So putting all this in an interview for B schools was definitely very, very challenging for me. I was, I thought that I can do everything. I can write essays or put my journey. I can get help on my resume part, but this is something which I need to do. And that time everything moved into an online world. I was, we were not so used to like to the Zoom world, right? And I, I gave all my interviews virtually and then how do I prepare for it? And that's where I was partnering with Experts Global and they, and you guys helped me with the mock interviews. So that was also very, very helpful, very insightful. I got the first, I got the feedback that these are some of the areas I have to improve upon. What are the areas I am excelling currently? What are my weak points, et cetera. And uh, I practiced, I practiced a lot in front of mirror. And then finally I was able to get through, but, um, you know the interviewers who are there in the B school. They are they are absolutely wonderful. They they will make you feel comfortable. They are not there that it's it's a dreaded thing, right? Um, may, you might feel that it's a dread, dreaded thing, but for them, um, you are someone whom who they want to hone up and build a future leader out of you. Yes. So yeah, so that's what they are looking for. They're just looking that how honest are you? What is your motivation? how much courage and determination you will have to go through the entire MBA experience. And then how would you give back to the society? So that's, these are the, some of the things they look into. So whenever you are telling your stories, you have to focus on these areas and, you know, just tell them a story, tell them a story that how you want to create a difference. Yeah. Yes, that is true. A lot of students, they do have this misconception that interviews are very grilling and, uh, they get very anxious, but it's really nice to know that your interview experiences uh, were very smooth and conversational. Yes. <laughs> so what would you like to say about your learnings from managing the application timeline? Yeah, the schools, the other schools which I was targeting, I had ample time and I was partnering with Experts Global and um, yeah, so I was like, it was, it was a very streamlined process that I had a tracker. I used to fill that, which is my deadline start date and the end date when I can apply and everything. So it was tracked very beautifully. And, uh, and yeah, that's how I was able to do it everything in time. Nothing happened that time. Whenever I was stuck, I, I asked for help and everything was clarified to me. And I was able to uh, submit all my applications on time. All right. Okay. Yeah. So would you like to share your MBA experience with us? Okay. Yeah, definitely. So my MBA experience was wonderful. Um, I think due to the COVID times, I really learned a lot going. We started on, on site and then it was in person and then we were back to on site and then, you know, in person. So it kept on going here and there. But MBA is, you have to give a lot of time and uh, uh, towards your studies. It's it's not that some if somebody says that MBA is tough, I would definitely agree, but it's not tough that uh, you cannot do it. It's just tough if you do not have that, if you have that mental roadblock. Once you are out of it, it takes a quarter to get through all that because you are not accustomed to read all those case studies on a daily basis, right? And you would have you would have got tons of cases to present, to discuss and everything. And uh, it takes really at least two months or a quarter to settle down. But once you are settled in, it becomes very easy because now you know after a quarter that um, you are able to do it, right? So you you can do it. 
So there's, and once you are, you have completed one quarter, there's no going back, right? I mean, you, you cannot just go and say, no, I don't want to do it anymore. So, uh, so that time you have only two choices, either you fear the journey and continue it, or either you enjoy the journey and continue it. Yeah. So obviously the most enjoyable part will be just enjoy the journey. And then once you're working with your uh, cohort, um, your faculty members, your, your professors, the journey becomes very, very easy. So everybody is like there to help you. Um, there would be some areas where you're weak and your uh, cohort members are very strong. I'll just say example, like for my, for me, the, uh, the finance related, any subjects related to finance was a weak point, but I excelled completely in other areas like strategy or macroeconomics thing. So it was a give and take that I got some help from my cohort members in these areas and I provided help in the other areas. So it's just a mutual sharing of work. That's how all the MBA courses are scheduled. You are put into team, uh, your team effort matters and it's it's overall and very enjoyable journey. You have you get a lot of learning. It's definitely you have to put in a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. I was putting at least fifteen to twenty years apart from work every week. Okay. So it takes that many hours of, of your life. Mm -hmm. uh, so few things to make sure is that your your work like your company is okay for you to do an MBA because it takes a lot of effort outside your work hours. You have a lot of support from your family. So I was very lucky that, you know, my husband, my parents, everybody supported me. Um, and then um, once you have that support, it's just that you should have full confidence in yourself to go through it. So I think keeping these in mind, these in mind, I, I don't think it will be a very horrible journey for anyone. I've, I've spoken to so many people. They have already, they have enjoyed their MBA journey. Yeah. All right. It seems like a very wholesome experience. Yeah, it, it <laughs> truly is. Yeah. Right. That's that's amazing. So what would be your final message or suggestions to all the viewers and the future candidates watching this video? Sure. So as I mentioned in my earlier questions, you should first try to analyze what's your motivation for an MBA because you know, MBA is not only an experience, but after MBA, you have a lot of responsibilities on your shoulders to give back from wherever you started. Right. So MBA is not only for your professional thing, it's also is for your personal growth, right? You you get to know many things which you, you, you would not be even uh, exposed to your, in your daily life. So, um, and that's what all the, all the leaders so far who are who have done the MBA, one thing is very common, they have the ability to give back mm -hmm. and they have ability to create the difference in other lives. So you have to carry on that responsibility throughout your life. So after doing an MBA, so um, it's not that that you complete the MBA and it's oh, okay, I have done my MBA. You, you will have that responsibility to give back. So if you're graduating from a school, you have the responsibility to give back to that school, help other cohorts, right? You would, you have to be, as an alumni, you have to give back. So that is one thing you have to be very clear about your motivation to do an MBA. Second thing is that you need to enjoy your journey. There's absolutely not going back. Third thing is that like once you are doing your MBA and post MBA, how you can um, like apply your MBA learnings to your work, right? So uh, obviously like MBA requires a lot of um, like financial strain on your part. It's not something which is, it's, it's, it's a very expensive course, right? Yes. So, yeah. So obviously if I do an MBA and I do not get anything out of my professional life, it will put me a setback. Yeah. So you need to work with your managers or, you know, your professional leaders that where I can contribute more to this company using my MBA knowledge. So that is something you need to analyze and you need to keep contributing it. So, yeah, and, and definitely I would say to all the viewers that with MBA, you have nothing to lose. You will always be on the gaining side. And once you have started this journey, you will always keep rising, rising, rising. That's because you have learned so much during this MBA course. Right. Yes, that is true. 
thank you so much Swetnisha for sharing your entire journey experiences and learnings with us I'm sure your suggestions are going to help a lot of students in their journey to success and congratulations to you for coming so far in this success journey so thank you so much for giving us your time thank you thanks a lot Dikshita okay take care yeah. thank you yeah, yeah. good night good night yeah bye